so, you know, I was just telling this brother who uh, is running in, in Georgia that, you know, when you talk about the things you can't or that aren't or that's not, that that is what you are attracting to yourself. So you came in, I'm going to win in South Carolina. <laughs> and here's why I have that's beaten right. these people. I've won in these five races every consecutively. I got that's 108 right. years of ancestors in the soil. Talk about that a little bit since we got three minutes. Sure. Sure. Um, yeah, my family has been in business in Bennettsville, South Carolina for 108 years. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's sad that so many South Carolinians are struggling because of two, at least two decades of Republican control. They have um, tried to define us as being anti-business because we are not only pro-business, we're pro-working people as well. And you know, I just refuse to let them define me. And this is a race we can win. We are, um, we're on the ground going into different parts of South Carolina every day. As I said, I'm in Charleston today, uh, camped out uh, for events and everywhere we go, South Carolinians are super energized and super excited about, about our campaign because it is different. We know what a losing strategy looks like after um, after two decades of Republican leaders or Republican uh, uh, elected officials, can't call them leaders, but we also know that uh, our state, South Carolinians, have to do have to be willing to do something different this year. We have the the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting a different result. As I said earlier, I don't know how much of it you heard. I have won five consecutive elections, even when the Republicans have come from my swing districts and tried to, uh, they've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to keep me out of the seats. We won. In 2020, we won by 24 points um, against a moderate Republican whose last name was Blot. Uh, so he had serious name recognition here in South Carolina and we outperformed Joe Biden in my Senate district by 18 points in 2020. Uh, that's the same year that my opponent in Charleston lost his reelection yeah, yeah. bid to Congress after just two years uh, serving there. So it, when, if South Carolinians are, are willing to do something different this year, this is a race we can and will win. And, I, and right. that excites me. 60 and, seconds, 60 seconds, Mia. Sure. Uh, I'm sorry, Senator, Senator McLeod. <laughs> What you're 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 elected June 14th and you make it to the the November elections. What are you going to do when you win? What are your first three things that you're going to do as governor of South Carolina? Oh, the first three things I'm going to do. I, well, I'm going to expand Medicaid on day one. I'm the only candidate in this race who lives with sickle cell anemia. And I know what it's like to have a health insurance premium before I served uh, in the state house and Senate. That's higher than my mortgage. So I'm going to expand Medicaid on day one. I will prioritize the needs and, and, and the struggles of everyday working South Carolinians, uh, put working people at the top of the ticket or the top of my list of priorities so that um, we can uh, create a South Carolina where every working person earns at least $15 an hour. That will be a, a, another priority for me. We got activators out there. A lot of you are in South Carolina. You want to sit up properly. We have State Senator Mia McLeod. She is running for governor of South Carolina. The primary is June 14th. There are 11 candidates. This woman must stand out. She's the first black woman to ever, ever throw her hat in the ring for this seat as governor. She was giving us three things she was going to get accomplished when elected in November after she gets through the primary. All right, let's recap. And thank you for sticking around, Senator McLeod. Thank you for having me. So give us a three. One was health. Yes. One is I'll expand Medicaid on day one. Two is I will make the working people of South Carolina a top priority. Uh, that has not happened <laughs> under uh, Republican control, our Republican uh, governor and our Republican control legislature. I will make sure I'm the only candidate in this race who believes that the hardworking people of South Carolina deserve a living wage of at least $15 an hour. Currently, uh, our minimum wage is $7.25 an hour. Uh, and the third thing it, that I will do is to uh, continue to address the systemic reforms that I know we need. That includes uh, get it moving beyond our minimally adequate public education system so that 
Um, all South Carolinians have a fighting chance. That, that means uh, improving our infrastructure and making sure that uh, our rural areas have access to, to broadband so that our students don't have to do their homework and schoolwork in parking lots. This is 2022, not 1922. And, you know, we've just got to do better. We've got to do right by all South Carolinians. Um, I've been working hard to legalize and decriminalize marijuana. I've been working hard to, to make sure that we have the criminal justice reforms that I know we need. Um, we still live in a state where our colleague and friend was gunned down in 2015 and seven years later, we still don't have a hate crime, uh, a hate crimes law in, in South Carolina. So those are just some of the systemic uh, reforms that I know we need. We need to focus on public education, workforce development and access, expanded access to healthcare. Those are the, those are the issues that I've always been uh, a champion of and those are the issues I'll continue to champion as governor. Well, South Carolina is among the worst states in our union for health care and education. Absolutely. Uh, and so, yeah, those are and, and for the everyday person. These things matter. You know, big business is great. It's great. To have BMW and all these, you know, but at the end of the day, it's the regular folk that make the state go. Right. Here's the thing, Karen. We've got high paying jobs right here in South Carolina. That's true. But we, uh, because of our minimally adequate public education system and the fact that Republicans have totally uh, tried to dismantle and defund public education as we know it in South Carolina, we have to, you know, those jobs, they, they're constantly bringing in people from out of state to fill those high paying positions. So it's not benefiting uh, everyday South Carolinians. And I'm, I'm going to change that as governor. Uh, State Senator Mia McLeod, she is running for governor of South Carolina. June 14th is the primary. I can't let you go without addressing a couple of things. First of all, uh, the sickle cell, you know, one of the most debilitating diseases that a person can live with. And you have it, you know, not just a trait. You have it. Right. I do. I've lived with sickle cell all my life. I was diagnosed when I came to the University of South Carolina as a freshman. And when I started my own company in 2003, my uh, health insurance premiums every month were higher than my mortgage. I was newly divorced. My sons were much younger and I couldn't afford health. And I couldn't afford to pay for health insurance that was higher than my mortgage every month. So there were many months when I went without health insurance and just prayed that nothing crazy happened. Um, but that is the story, unfortunately, and that is the struggle of so many South Carolinians, even today. So I will expand Medicaid on day one uh, as governor. It's something Henry McMaster should have done. It's something Nikki Haley should have done. But certainly we should have had a governor who cared enough to do it during a global pandemic. He Come has on. not. I will on day one. And so far, I mean, we've lost uh, well over 18,000 South Carolinians to this virus. I know what it's like to live with a chronic health condition and to have to, you know, just be extra careful and, and vigilant about um, keeping COVID-19 at bay. Uh, so I want to work with other South Carolinians who want to create a healthy state because the last time I checked, sick people don't work and dead people don't either. So it's it's in our best interest to make sure that South Carolina is a safe place to live and work. And I will do that as governor. Go to MiaForSC.com. Join us. We need resources. We need fun. We need uh, funds. We need uh, volunteers. You don't have to live in South Carolina to do either of those. You can, you can contribute to the campaign and volunteer from wherever you are in the country. So thank you for, thank you for having us today. And Absolutely. thank you for allowing me to uh, speak to and for everyday South Carolinians. That's why I'm running.